everyone and welcome back to Candid Conversations. Thank you so much for coming back. If you are a returnee, you are a regular degular dude. Thank you, thank you, you far too oh, kind. Oh. Are you welcome to the Candid Conversations family? We'd love to have you here. So do yourself a favor and subscribe, like, comment, and share this video with anyone that you think will benefit from watching this. On this channel, we post really informative content. We have interviews with business leaders, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, social activists, and any Anyone who really is doing anything interesting in the world that we want to get candid about. I am back for another episode of Behind the Blog. So if you want to know which blog I chose to talk about today, stay tuned because we'll be back right after this. What I chose for today was a blog I wrote, I think about two months ago on the Candid Conversations website and it is titled Your Limiting Beliefs Are Holding You Back. I know that I write a lot of political, social, cultural and I guess taboo and controversial topics and blogs but this one was one that was very sentimental, very just real and confronted the human condition so it's nothing hectic but it is hectic on your soul which is the intention. So 2020 for me has just been a really, really interesting year. I have evolved in ways that I didn't even think I'd evolve. I've learned so much about myself as a person, so much about my purpose, so much about the impact I want to have in the world. And part of me discovering the impact that I wanted to have in the world involved me letting go. Letting go. Of any limiting belief that I had about myself, about my life, about my environment, and about anything that had to do with me. So first up, let's talk about what limiting beliefs are. Limiting beliefs are the beliefs that we carry about ourselves that have either been picked up in our childhood or that we've acquired from social circles and that we've taken into every single new room that we walk into. It's a simple thing as if you growing up in a household where there was not a lot of money and you couldn't get everything you wanted. So you grew up and you ingrained in yourself the limiting belief that money is hard to make and you'll never have enough money if you were not affirmed as a child or if you were in friendships that decreased your self-esteem you would walk around with the limiting belief that constantly tells you that you're you are not worthy you are not valued your self-esteem is low your self-confidence is low and you just don't have the capacity to stand up and do great things so those are limiting beliefs that we pick up from our environment um and that at times in our childhood, we don't have the maturity to overcome and to, to really defend and repel and rebut by statements that say, no, even though I did grow up in a home that is not wealthy, I can be the next generation um, in my family line that acquires wealth. At 10 years old, if you just see your parents struggling to get food, you internalize that as your reality. And sometimes we have many adults walking around with those internalized feelings and thoughts that manifest in their adulthood when they're completely separated from that situation and they have the capacity to change their lives for the better. So I hope I did a good job of explaining limiting beliefs because that's what I've understood them to be. Obviously, I'm still learning and growing in my own personal development journey. So I'll probably discover something new about limiting beliefs when I'm 25. But that's what I know in my 20 year old um, mind at the moment. So I went, I went through my own personal journey of confronting my limiting beliefs because I was getting into a space where I was getting opportunities and I wanted to do so many things. I wanted to take candid conversations far. I wanted to be creative and feel comfortable in my creative space of writing writing and, and making YouTube videos and speaking on platforms that I was invited to speak and believing that all the crazy ideas that I had in my mind could become a reality, you know? So when I was confronted with the possibilities of life, I knew that I could not walk into all of those things still thinking that I am not enough or I am not worthy because I'll never ever get to the level at which I know I can get to if I still have things holding me back. And I always picture limiting beliefs as a person who has an anchor tied to their foot. If you have an anchor tied to your foot, you can only walk at least a few meters but you won't get very far. That's what limiting beliefs do to you. So it's important for us to know that in any situation, if we feel anxious about going after an opportunity or if we feel 
just uncomfortable in relationships and friendships and situations in a negative way it could be that you have a limiting belief about yourself in that situation one personal example that i can talk about that was a limiting belief for me had a lot to do with me as a writer i am studying a bcom degree majoring in economics and finance at wits university so i should have no business in writing and literature and anything that has to do with the arts but because i'm a complex human being and my talents and interests vary across different platforms i find those worlds intertwine at times and so there was a point where i was writing and getting candid conversations started and there were thoughts in my mind that said but like Ty, you're not a writer, you don't have a writer's degree, you are not studying creative writing, do you even know where a punctuation mark goes? Um, and it's crazy because I was a brilliant writer in high school, English was my space to play, it was my canvas, and I painted that canvas till the paint ran out. So I didn't even have reasons to be nervous, but each time I'd post a blog, I'd ask myself, am I good enough? Will my writing actually be recognized in any platform because I'm not like a professional writer, you know? And that was a limiting belief. I actually took, I think, two months to overcome that limiting belief before I actually said to myself, you know what, I'm going to start this project, I'm going to start this organization, and I am going to write on a regular basis. I'm going to make sure that every week I upload content because I knew that the more I do it and the more I push myself to do it, automatically my brain will react to that movement and it'll see that, okay, we're actually taking the step and we're writing these blogs and we're doing this. So clearly this means that you have a capacity to do it. And I guess as I kept on doing it month after month after month, I got so used to it that that voice in my head that will always ask me, are you good enough to write? Suddenly fell away, diminished and it doesn't come back. Um, so I couldn't really fully step into what, what I wanted to do before I... So I couldn't really step into what I wanted to do unless I took a conscious, deliberate decision to let go of the thoughts and beliefs that were no longer serving me. And I, I knew that this was a limiting belief because I sometimes used to procrastinate writing. And procrastination, I think, is another blog. It's another video. It's just another textbook because it is complex. It's not just you sitting around saying, oh, I'll do that assignment tomorrow, or I'll write that book tomorrow, or I'll start going to the gym tomorrow. It actually is embedded in your psychology and in the way you perceive yourself. So I used to procrastinate writing a blog because I just feel like I'm too tired or I have assignments, I don't have time. You always have time. Just in case you were thinking that you don't have time to go to the gym, you always have time. And I always used to make excuses. But when I looked beneath that, I realized that the procrastination was me merely using a cushion and silencing or rather burying my feelings of inadequacy and insecurity and not being sure of my ability in procrastination because the more you say I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, you actually don't have to face that insecurity because you're not putting yourself on the crossroads of you facing that insecurity. So sometimes you're procrastinating. The thing you really want to do is just boil down to you not feeling good enough or not feeling worthy enough or not feeling competent enough to do it. Really, really take your time to examine your procrastination. Do you procrastinate before you're supposed to do an assignment? Is it procrastinating because you're really tired or you don't feel like you're at the standard at which you want to, to competently tackle that assignment? And that is all linked to limiting beliefs. So this is going to be a very, very short video, but I wanted to talk about you know, letting go of your limiting beliefs because I know so many people who are talented at so many things, but they never go into it full force with the tenacity and boldness and the vigor that is needed to make your dreams come true. Because sometimes we hold on to beliefs about ourselves that no longer serve the person or the people that we are becoming. So think, make a list, take your notebook, write down what are the beliefs that I have about myself. Do you believe you're not beautiful? Do you believe that you cannot make money? Do you believe that you don't have patience? Do you believe that you don't have the tolerance levels for other people and you're automatically moody? Do you believe that you don't have wisdom? Or do you believe that you don't have the skills you need to run a business? 
make a list of all those things and then another page make a list of all the things you want to achieve and dream big be audacious dream about meeting oprah or going to the Met gala or whatever it is you know write it down and then compare it to and ask yourself this list of limiting beliefs and this list of my goals looking at the two will the one lead to the other so look at the cause and effect if you hold on to your limiting beliefs, do you think that you will achieve your goal of running that million rand business one day or graduating or becoming somebody in life? And if not, then I think you need to change the list of beliefs that you have about yourself. Mobilize yourself to believe that you can let go of limiting beliefs and take on more liberating beliefs. So if your belief is at the moment currently i am not good enough to run a business because my mother ran a business and it failed if you have that belief and you have a goal that says i want to run my own fashion fashion line or boutique take that belief down completely destroy it and it's going to take some time but what you do is underneath that belief that you wrote down and i learned this technique from a very very inspiring a motivational speaker named Lisa Nichols. Please check out her videos. But she taught me this lesson. You write down your limiting belief about yourself and then underneath that you write the truth. So with the example that I made of I will never ever run a successful business because my mother failed at business. Underneath that write I will run a successful business because I will learn the skills that I need to run a business. I will get a great team that can supplement my weaknesses and I will work on my self-confidence to be able to stand in rooms and say I am the owner of so-and-so's fashion boutique and you keep on doing that you keep on writing the lie and the truth and the lie and the truth and eventually the truth will set you free and the truth will be the thing that keeps you motivated to achieve your goal and that's how you break things like limiting beliefs and you take on more liberating beliefs I suggest that if you do want to read more on the topic of limiting beliefs please do check out the article that I post we'll leave it in the description box down below this video for you to check it out but there's so much material on limited beliefs and i'll leave the videos that i've watched and the articles that i've read in the description box below so you can i guess study this, this topic more because it is a real thing limited beliefs are a real thing but i hope this behind the blog episode helped because limiting beliefs are something that we don't talk about because limiting beliefs are things that we often don't talk about and we actually think that the thoughts we have in our mind is the truth but they're not. Sometimes you'll go a day with so much negative self-talk and chatter in your brain constantly telling you that you are not worthy or you're not valuable or you're not smart enough. And those thoughts don't have to be your thoughts. I know it sounds impossible because you're like, how can I control my thoughts? But my main question is, what are you exposing yourself to? If you're constantly exposing yourself to the same friends that tell you that you are not worthy enough, then you're going to think those thoughts. If you watch content that contributes to you feeling bad about yourself, you're going to feel those things. So my number one tip is to listen to podcasts, plug into books um, and videos that will help you get the knowledge that you don't have about limiting beliefs because knowledge really is power. When I knew that such a thing as limiting beliefs existed, I was able to recognize and diagnose my emotional and mental problem and then go on with the treatment. And the treatment is just to try every day. It's just to say one kind thing to yourself every day. It's just to take on one challenge every day and stand at the crossroad of the world that you fear the most. And that's how you set yourself free from limiting beliefs. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for supporting Candid Conversations. If you have not yet subscribed to our content on our website, please do go to our website and subscribe by leaving an email and you'll be on our mailing list. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and share these videos with anyone that you think will benefit from our content thank you so much and i'll see you next time on candid conversations